I have been following Stark Solutions since um, March of 2012. Um, I started a, I have a McDougal group on Facebook. We have 9,000 members and wow. I've been doing that for a long time. I'm also um, Stark Solutions certified and I'll be going to your meeting on Monday um, okay. for the Stark Solutions graduates. Um, so uh, at this point, I'm 5'7", I, well, I'm 58. I'm 5'7", I'm 135 pounds. Um, during the pandemic, I chose to lose weight um, because I was eating out at vegan restaurants. Yeah. And I knew, and, and when the pandemic hit, I couldn't do that, right? So I knew that, I mean, I always knew that that was not a great thing. Um, so um, at this point though, I have to say, I, I'm, I'm really pleased to say that, you know, my blood pressure is normal. My cholesterol is 147. My C-reactive protein is 0.4. It went up one number from 0.3, but my hemoglobin A1C went down to 4.9. And I am really pleased with that. Now, so I feel like I'm in great shape. I'm fitter now than I was 10 years ago, but I have one symptom that's kind of perplexing. My thyroid's fine. I, I just don't really know what's going on with me. And I'm experiencing hair loss. And in, you know, I had, I had the, um, uh, I had COVID in January, but my hair loss started before the COVID. And it was weird. My hairdresser said to me, it's like you have COVID hair, but you haven't had COVID. And so I don't really understand kind of what's, it's not uh, alopecia. There's no spots of balding or right. anything like that. It's just hair kind of brush. all over hair. Yep. A lot. Yep. Too much. And the, too much. Actually, it, it alarms my hairdresser because it's a lot of hair in the sink. Right. No, I, I, I have to say that I hear about this rarely, but common enough. So I've, I've heard your complaint. Yeah. Of course, people associate hair loss with a low protein diet. Okay. which is you know, complete nonsense. You know, that's what they resort to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you get older, you lose hair. But more importantly, in a woman, whenever she changes her hormonal status, that means she gets pregnant. Well, she starts her menstrual period. She gets pregnant. She starts nursing or she goes through menopause. Yeah. This change in hormone levels results in hair loss. Okay. And so that may be what you're noticing is you may be at one of those periods of time when you're particularly with the weight loss, your estrogen levels are going down. Okay. So that's what I would say. You're not going to go bald. Uh, it, this is, uh, I think this is a, a fairly normal thing to happen. Fortunately, it's rare. Okay. All right. I'm glad you've done so well. And I'm, and I'm particularly glad that you you found it uh, fun and rewarding to help other people. Isn't it great? It's, 9, it's, people. Yeah. It, it's the most exciting thing that I do. Uh, I mean, I, I really, really enjoy it. I also now teach yoga. I teach Bikram yoga. And so I, I don't know if you, you probably don't remember, you might not have known that when I was at the 10, 12, at the 10 day, it was a 10 day back then, I would take a cab to the Bikram yoga studio in Santa Rosa uh, while everybody else was walking. I would take a, you know, a cab, but that yoga has really transformed my health. Mm -hmm. But since then, you know, I've gotten into jogging and I do other exercises and I'm, you know, as I said, I'm healthier now than I was um, 10 years ago, but you know, nothing is more important than the food I put in my mouth. Right. Um, you know, that, that's really what has transformed me. And, you know, I, whether I have to wake up at four in the morning to teach a class to drive someplace to teach a class, or I don't get done with work until 10 o'clock at night. You know, I have the energy to do all of that now. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. But uh, what I love most is helping people. Yeah. You know, the rewards, you, you could, you would know the rewards that I, that yeah. I thrive off of is yeah. knowing you've helped other people. Yeah. We, we teach a, a start certification course and we give you a, a certificate which says that you know the starch solution because you have to take a test. Yeah. And so you get this up, you get this plaque that you can display in your teaching setting. It just says you've learned the starch solution. That's all it says. Yes. And, uh, and we offer that on, on our website, drmcdougall.com. And a lot of people, hundreds of people are certified in the starch solution, maybe thousands. But uh, yeah, we have a meeting this Monday and 
we're talking about, uh, I believe the 18th of uh, April. It's this Monday. I may have the calendar wrong, but I think Monday's the 18th. No, I think, yeah, you think Monday's the 18th, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be at at nine o'clock in the morning. So everybody who starts certified uh, graduate is going to meet with Mary and I and Heather. And just an hour we're going to spend together. And then at uh, 10 o'clock, I'll be on Chef AJ's show. And I'm I'm going to talk about the title of the lecture is uh, Eggs Are for Easter. (laughs) <laughs> it's a whole presentation on what eggs are all about. And this being Easter Sunday today. Yes. Uh, it's, it's very appropriate, even though I'm one day late. Most people, particularly if you have grandchildren, you have uh, hard-boiled eggs left over in the kitchen. Hopefully, I can encourage you to throw them down the garbage disposal where you're <laughs> eating them. And yeah. so that'll be, that'll be tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and I'll be with you guys at 9 o'clock. It'll be fun. Excellent. I didn't realize that you would be there. So that's very exciting. I look forward to seeing you again. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your your comments. All right. Thanks, Dr. McDougall. All right. Thanks, Jackie, for that. Next, we have JJ. JJ, what is your question? Hi, Dr. McDougall. I'm very excited um, and a bit nervous. I don't know if you have any other hamburgers being fans of yours, but I'm a hamburger calling you from Hamburg now. And... um, could just spend all night just telling you how much you transformed lives. Now, there's one life you haven't touched yet, and I'm in constant battle with this person. That's kind of where my burning question Mm. is going to. Um, My brother-in-law has um, chronic kidney disease, Um, and he's done a lot of things diet-wise, and he thinks he knows it all. Well, I don't think he does. And now the question is, am I on the right track or am I maybe on the wrong track? No, so um, right his, track. his seems to be um, a genetic thing. And I know there's debate about genes being turned on, off and on. Um, but anyway, his, his dad died of chronic kidney disease. His younger sister yeah. has been a dialysis patient. And he's heading for dialysis. And I guess I wouldn't care as much as I do, but he now wants my sister's kidney so now I'm getting a bit alarmed and I'm wondering if Walter Kempner's rice diet which some people think is just completely nuts if that could help him that's kind of my first burning question yeah definitely the Kempner approach is where I send people with extreme kidney disease you know when you get down to only 10 percent of your kidney function left and by the way at 25 percent of kidney function you show no signs of disease the kidneys are so overabundant in their abilities to detoxify you that you have to destroy over 75% of your kidney mass before you run into problems. Uh, I, I would direct you to my website, uh, drbigdougal.com, and under hot topics is a section on kidney disease. And there's an article I wrote uh, called Diet and Kidney Disease. I would get that in his arms. I have him read that and and that would be at least you'd have the basic education on what diet would do. If I was going to guess a genetic disease, it would be polycystic kidney disease. That, that's, mm-hmm. that's the most common genetic disease. And that is the progression of that is slowed with a low protein, healthy diet. And that's been researched and published. And you'll, you'll also find a book. In fact, I think the book is still offered free on our website. It's called McDougall's Medicine, A Challenge in Second Opinion. You go in and you try and purchase the book. And when you get to the, the sign out and check out, the, the cost is nothing. We just give it away. So that's McDougall's Medicine, A Challenge in Second Opinion. It's on the website, drmcdougall.com. There's a chapter on kidney disease that I wrote in 1985. Mm. So I sure. And the other, the other thing you might do is you might take him to a dialysis ward. And just give him a little tour of hell on earth. And this, this has got to be the most, the greatest motivator I can imagine for somebody looking at other ways than a kidney machine. You're tied to this machine, sitting there in a room with a bunch of other people who have similar sicknesses. It's not a pleasant way to spend your week. And you'll be there several times a week. So that can maybe be a motivator for him. And the research is clear. You know, the research is so clear that every, every kidney doctor, every kidney dietitian learns this research and then they discount it. They discount it. And I've seen this happen in patient after patient. Somebody with kidney problems would go to the doctor, the nephrologist, they call them. 
And the doctor will say, okay, well, you know, a low protein diet's important. I'll have you see the renal dietitian. And then both of them say, yeah, diet's important. Come on, come on over here. We'll show you the dialysis machines. <laughs> dialysis machine is going to suck all those toxins off you. Well, it doesn't. It sucks the media toxins off you, the ones that will kill you right away, but it doesn't suck, it doesn't suck the to toxins off you that cause you to have a dramatic increase in dying of heart disease. That's how most kidney patients die of cardiovascular disease. So it's at best a temporizing treatment, but an important one. But certainly I, I think just like all the problems that I talked to you about, I think a patient deserves to hear this first, what they can do by themselves, no cost, no side effects, kind for the planet, what they can do, they ought to hear about it first, instead of the drugs and the devices and the, and the surgeries. I mean, save those for last. So anyway, I, I, I just keep working on them. If this is a person important in your life, it sometimes takes a while to get people to change. And if it takes a while, so it be. But if you just keep at them and there are various techniques that people have for approaching other people who, who don't understand this. And one approach is like me. I just get it in their face and I tell them. And some of you are not that brazen. Just, just look good, function well, let the person notice. And then when they ask, tell them what you do. But don't stop trying. Whatever talent you have, you need to share it with people so that they change their diet, not just for their own personal health, but for the health of the planet. Diet therapy for planet Earth is where my mind is these days. In fact, I have a new website. It's called mcdougallfoundation.org. And it's dedicated, it's paid for my, by my 501c3 foundation. So if you've got any extra money, you can always donate to that. And, and this foundation has put up this website uh, about diet therapy for planet Earth. It's uh, mcdougallfoundation.org. And what it talks about is how you as an individual can change what's happening to the planet overnight. Do, do you know that you can reduce your uh, contribution of carbon to the planet by 80% overnight by changing your diet? I provide you 10 studies there are no studies that say differently. I provide you 10 studies that show that a change to a vegan diet will reduce your greenhouse gases, your global warming gases by somewhere between 50 and 87% overnight. So don't stop telling people we have everything to lose. Thank you for that doctor. And thank you, JJ. Next we have Sophia. Sophia, what is your question? Hi, thank you so much, doctor, for your dedication. Thank you so much. Uh, I have two quick questions. I wonder if I can reverse uh, mm -hmm. synovial inflammation due to RA by following your program. And my second question, I try to fast about 16 hours every day, which helped me a lot, but I felt uh, lethargic uh, before breaking fast, could it be due to hypoglycemia? Thank you. Well, I, I think what you asked is, can you help rheumatoid arthritis? You're darn right you can. Uh, in fact, I would say our success rate with rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of inflammatory arthritis, so they call it psoriatic or lupus or, or nonspecific arthritis. Uh, starts, the benefits start in four to seven days once you clear out your bowel. Within four months, uh, essentially everyone that's going to get better gets better. And how often do they get better? Well, I'd have to say that uh, in comparison, our success rate with rheumatoid arthritis is similar to our success rate with constipation. In other words, pretty much everybody gets better. And uh, I have a, a lecture that's up on YouTube. Again, you go to McDougall channel and you get the fewest advertisements on autoimmune disease, and it talks to you about the studies on rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory arthritis. So yeah, it's, it's a very rewarding condition to treat as people with an inflammatory arthritis, whatever you call it. As far as fasting goes, I, I can't speak to fasting. I, 
I don't know whether you develop a low blood sugar. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that. See, the body has uh, glycogen stored in it. In other words, it stores sugar in the liver and the muscles. And this two pounds of glycogen is released when you're not eating or when you have increased demands, like if you're going to run a race. So, you know, it keeps your blood sugars at a reasonable level. Uh, I don't know why you feel fatigued after 16 hours of fast, but I'm pretty sure that just fasting for 16 hours a day is not going to result in any significant changes. If you fast for two or three weeks, as you would at a fasting center like True North, which I can't say enough good things about. If you fast for a period of time on water, maybe it's one week, maybe it's less, maybe it's longer, you'll experience tremendous benefits because it's the ultimate elimination diet. It eliminates all the cholesterol, all the fat, all the allergens, all the poisons. I mean, after all, you're just drinking water. The, uh, the, the, the drawback to a fasting program is that it has to end. You can only fast for a certain period of time and then you have to go back to eating. Well, True North teaches our diet. And so what the people leave, leave that center understanding is why they need to eat a high carbohydrate starch-based diet. So um, anyway, there's a role for fasting, but as far as long-term results, you need to fix the food. It's the food. Mm -hmm.